Welcome to London. Today we visit one of the more ancient and historical parts of London, once a gateway to the very heart of the city that the Romans settled in the first century. We're on the edge of the enclave that is the city of London today, an area I've been doing business all my working life. Every different corner turned, every street, alley and court has a story to tell, so I'm going to focus on and share with you one street, London's Leather Lane, home to one of London's oldest street markets. We're well off the tourist trail here, it's an area very popular at lunchtime with Londoners and the many commuters and visitors here on business. I'm at the market for some of London's best coffee and a traditional British lunch. Market forces are real here, market stalls need to deliver what the public want or they don't last long and the best have long lines. With few new victims fresh off the plane in the form of tourists in this part of town, the market relies on locals from the surrounding residences and many businesses. It's old school, repeat business and word of mouth haven't yet been replaced by social media marketing here. Well, the local council haven't done much, if any, marketing for this historic market, so it really is one of London's hidden gems. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to London. Today, I'm starting at Chancery Lane Tube. It's just there. I'm actually at the junction of High Holborn and Gray's Inn Road. You can see just here behind me, I'm actually right on the edge of the city of London. Dragon boundary markers there, and there's one just on the other side of the road there. I've been taking care of some business today in London's Hatton Garden, which is just down here, and it's lunchtime. So, you get some lunch at one of London's famous street markets. Actually, it's probably one of London's hidden gems as far as. Um, markets go. It's uh, Leather Lane, Leather Lane Market which runs parallel with Hatton Garden. Um, it's just down here and today it's really become renowned for street food. Um, I'm going to go to one of the uh, the old school shops that's been there for quite a while but yeah we to cut through this amazing uh, old building here and uh, we'll get some lunch. Actually first of all I'll get some coffee, I'll show you the market then we'll get some lunch then head to the end, show the old Italian quarter and um, yeah, that end of the street. But this is such an ancient part of the city, everywhere is uh, filled with stories. Welcome to Holborn Bars, originally built as the headquarters for the Prudential Assurance Company. It was built here on the former site of Furnival's Inn, which was an Inn of Chancery, which were originally something along the lines of a mix of legal educational institute, professional association and members club with accommodation for solicitors. In the same way the Inns of Court were and are today for barristers and judges, and originally law would have been taught here in the city by the clergy. But to cut a long and muddled story short, in the 13th century King Henry III outlawed legal education in the city and the Pope banned the clergy from teaching law. The Inns of Court later got their liberty and continued to function to this day. The Inns of Chancery didn't, but a few hundred years later the Inns of Chancery were still here doing, well, nothing. So they were finished, sold and eventually demolished making way for this to be built. This Victorian Gothic revival building was designed by Alfred Waterhouse, most well known for designing the Natural History Museum and Manchester Town Hall. Construction of this building was in phases between 1885 and 1901, originally fully equipped with facilities that included a chapel, restaurant and hall for Prudential Company plays. Also designed into the original building were separate entrances for women to preserve their modesty, plus the ladies had their own exclusive facilities such as a library and roof promenade and both sexes could enjoy the latest Victorian technology, electric lighting and centrally plumbed hot water, cutting edge innovation at the time. Prudential left in 1999, however they retain ownership and lease most of it out. Okay, just here is Leather Lane itself, which runs parallel with Hatton Garden, London's home of London's jewellery trade. And uh, yeah, the market starts just here. First up, coffee. There's some lunch. Take a look at the market stalls. Yeah, Leather Lane Market. There's been a street market here for hundreds of years, some say since the 16th century. The market opens currently from Monday to Friday from around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and is busiest at lunch times. Although most of the stores and coffee shops that line the street and obviously the pubs are open all day, some even at weekends. But the whole area for a long time has been a relative ghost town at weekends. Very popular coffee shop there. Department of Coffee and Social Affairs. Head to another one. 
equally as good just down here. At this end of Level Lane Market, you have stalls selling general goods, flowers, and clothing. And then the market transitions ever increasingly into food and drink. There's some amazing street food here. There are local residents in the area, but a huge influx of people stream into this area every day from the suburbs to work in the local offices, mostly Monday to Friday. And as you saw from the size of the Prudential building, they've been doing that for well over a century. Hence, this market's popularity is a spot to get lunch. You can tell what's good to this market because of the queues, the lines. I'm going to head to Proof Rock Coffee here. Get coffee first of all. Okay, welcome to Proof Rock Coffee, arguably one of the best coffee shops in London. Founded by a former barista champion and a barista championship head judge, not only do they serve phenomenal coffee, great food, and coffee beans all the kit to brew coffee at home. They also run coffee training classes. Everything from beginner's basic coffee classes through to professional barista training. You can see some of the many awards they've earned behind the bar. Today, I was hoping for a filter coffee, a pour over, but I was told they're only serving espresso based drinks. So I asked for an Americano and was told I was having a long black. So not exactly award winning form today, but I've been here many times during the many years I've worked in the area and the coffee's always been great. The Department of Coffee and Social Affairs across the road is also usually pretty good, as is Workshop up on Clerkenwell Road by St John's Gate. But yeah, Proof Rock is definitely one of the best independent coffee shops in London, and their training programme has and will continue to create more great coffee shops. Okay. Long Black from Proof Rock Coffee. Let's give this a go. That is good. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he doesn't stop. Right, let's get some lunch. Some amazing looking street food on these stalls here. And that's one of them that jumps out at me. And heads one of the old school shops. Something a little bit more traditional. Just here on the uh, corner of St Cross Street and Lever Lane. Two real favourites here at the market. Um, Boom Burger there for burgers and uh, Daddy Donkey here for burritos. Daddy Donkey um, started off as a stall, a truck like Boom Burger. Proved so popular, I've got a stall on the corner. Um, but yeah, it's the most popular thing down this market food. Um, there's far more stalls actually um, at this end of the market. There is mention of Hatton Garden being home to the wealthy in the 1700s, but in later years the whole area is mainly regarded as a dilapidated slum, which meant it was a cheap place to live and that meant it was home to first wave immigrants. There were highly skilled Italians here in London making instruments by the early 1800s, and in later years many unskilled Italians came here through necessity, fleeing Italy's turmoil post-Napoleon, and a large Italian community formed here. The area became known as Little Italy. That all ended in June 1940 when Mussolini joined the Germans and declared war on Britain. So most Italian born men aged 16 to 60 were interned as enemy aliens and many that weren't anglicised their names. A lot of Italian families left the area for a number of reasons or intermarried. There is however a part of Little Italy left at the end of this street and we can go and take a look at that in a moment. <laughs> Okay, here, corner of Hatton Wall and Lever Lane. Um, another few popular spots at pub, craft beer pub. <laughs> Not today. Um, burgers there. Greg's the Bakers. <laughs> Famous for their sausage rolls. Yeah, enough about Greg's. I'm going to go to uh, a traditional place, the fish and ship shop next door. It's been there for years. Pretty good value for money. Oh, yeah. 
the street still, the street food stalls really pick up here. Um, once right from here straight to the end, whereas that end of the market is a bit more uh, general retail going on. From here on out, it's primarily food. Fish and chips from the traditional place, Leverlane. The smell of all this street food cooking is phenomenal. I'm gonna pop around the corner. One to eat my fish and chips, but also I'll share with you um, the remains of one of London's old Italian quarters. So as the name would suggest, the traditional place here on Lever Lane is a traditional looking British takeaway chippy upstairs and they also have seating downstairs if you want somewhere inside to enjoy your fish and chips. As I was saying earlier, this area was home to a very large Italian community for decades until World War II. It didn't disappear overnight but it did fall into very sharp decline. From the outbreak of war until early 1940, the British government and the people had been fairly optimistic about the outcome and in turn fairly relaxed to so-called enemy aliens, aka immigrants. But as France fell, sentiment and attitudes changed. It was felt France had been undermined from within and that was part of the reason why it fell so quickly. So when Italy declared war on Britain in reference to Italians living in Britain, Churchill is said to have ordered police to collar the lot. Italians were in turn to be shipped to Canada and the public were attempting to smash up the rest. But there is a little bit left, probably saved because this little bit was requisitioned by the Irish at the time. It's an amazing looking church flanked by delis right here. Okay, this is the street here that runs parallel with Everlane, Hatton Garden. Um, blue plaque here, check this out. And then I'll show you the Italian, the Italian church and the uh, deli. Okay, here in the UK there's a blue plaque scheme and it's used to commemorate the link between people and buildings and there are many here in London. This one is for Sir Harim Maxim who had a workshop here. He's most renowned for inventing the machine gun, the Maxim gun, here in his workshops at the end of Hatton Garden. He did invent many other things. He ended up in quite a lengthy legal battle, I think, with Thomas Edison because he installed the first electric lights in a building in New York, which Thomas Edison later went on to claim he'd invented the light bulb. But anyway, that's a different story. This here at the end of Hatton Garden on Clerkenwell Road is arguably the most renowned remains of what was once Lit Litley here in London. Okay, the amazing looking church there at the end of Hatton Garden is the St. Peter's Italian Church, which was consecrated on the 16th of April, 1863. It's actually much bigger than it looks. It runs along behind the buildings in front of it. To the side are the Italian delis. One of them shut right now. The other one is back in business. It, the other one was shut for quite a while as well. Okay, I'm gonna head back down Hatton Garden, back up to the market and uh, Find somewhere to perch and eat my, uh, try my fish and chips. In the entranceway to the church is a monument to the SS Andorra Star, which was the ship for Italian internees. Um, the SS Andorra Star sailed from Liverpool, bound for Canada with 734 Italian internees, 479 German internees, 86 prisoners of war and almost 400 crew, British military guards and merchant sailors. On the 2nd of July 1940, it was unescorted with no Red Cross insignia and was sunk by a German U-boat. Controversial for a number of reasons, most of which because over 800 souls were lost. St Peter's Italian Church at the end of Hatton Garden remains a focal point for London's Little Italy and many of London's Italian community and it hosts a very popular historic annual procession each year. 
So after World War II, the area was in a terrible state. It had sustained considerable damage and a large number of the local population had left, which meant once again it was cheap, once again open to first wave immigrants, and the Italians were replaced by a large Jewish community displaced by war, which were largely responsible for the gem and jewelry industry that developed here and the hat and garden we know today. Okay, found the perfect ledge, the windowsill, the craft beer pub <coughs> here on Level Lane, in the corner of a hat and Level Lane. So let's try these fish and chips. The chip shop is just there, We've just gone round in a big circle. Enjoy my fish and chips and a uh, fish, chips, and pickle, gherkin. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this uh, quick trip, quick look at Level Lane Market, coffee at Pro Frock, fish and chips, traditional fish and chips from the, uh, the traditional place. Definitely recommend both. So, um, until next time, toodles. So if you're in London during the week, Level A Market is definitely a great market to come and enjoy lunch from either one of the many market stalls or the cafes and restaurants that line the street behind while you take a look at some of the other goods for sale on the other market stalls and you'll find some of the best coffee in town here. It's got fantastic transport links which is why so many businesses and offices are here and we're a relatively short walk from some of London's greatest historical sites and landmarks. Just across Holborn Viaduct is St Paul's Cathedral, the Bank of England, the Monument to the Great Fire of London, Leadenhall Market and of course the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. So if you're heading in the direction of any of those, starting here at Chancery Lane and Level Lane Market will give you a glimpse of a London that relatively few tourists see and today it's a nice part of town. We're surrounded by investment banks and media companies and of course jewellers. Hatton Garden that runs parallel with Level Lane is renowned as London's jewellery workshop, so high quality craftsmanship regulated by the British Assay Offices, which represent the oldest form of consumer protection in the world. You'll find bespoke quality that competes with off the peg prices. Every weekend the streets lined with couples shopping for engagement rings, wedding bands and gifts, so that's definitely worth checking out if you're in this part of town. Noble mention for the uh, the Argyle, formerly the King of Diamonds. Part at the end of Level Lane. It's great in the summer. Um, you can uh, sit out on this terrace balcony up here. Or you could go to the gym after work. There's one next to the pub. Toodles.